Hello and welcome to this special edition of Asia Today from Seoul with me, Charles Scanlon. It's a month since opposition politicians stunned the nation by impeaching President No Mu Hyun. He came to office promising to clean up a corrupt political system. In the general election on Thursday, South Koreans will give their verdict on the impeachment and on a series of corruption scandals that have discredited established politicians. These are hard times for Korean politicians. This party veteran began with a grueling display of penance for past sins. With one bow every three steps, it took her three days to cover 13 kilometers. She campaigned the next week in a wheelchair. In the shadow of the financial district, the long dominant Conservative Party also presents a sorry sight. It's moved to makeshift tents after abandoning its headquarters. For decades, this party controlled a lucrative money machine. Now it says it's destitute, forced to pay back some $70 million in illegal slush funds. It's a little bit uncomfortable because in the morning it's very cold, so we need uh, uh, heaters like this and we need a thick coat to warm. But in the afternoon it's, uh, well, it's very hard because of the sun. How do you keep up morale though in, um, in uncomfortable circumstances like this? Well, Korean people want change, so we have to follow the people's wish. They're keeping a running scorecard of campaign violations. The party's trying to show it's now cleaner than its opponents. But it's proving a hard sell. Yang Jung-ja appeals to commuters in her North Seoul constituency. But there's a problem. She's on a blacklist accused of taking illicit money, one of 200 candidates singled out by civic groups demanding clean government. They're putting the pressure on me. I suspect my opponent took far more money than I did, but they're only putting the spotlight on me. They say the money was illegal, but it was just an oversight. I didn't declare it because it was private business. Dancing in the road seems to be okay, but party workers say they're hemmed in with campaign restrictions. The lavish extravaganzas of the past are no longer possible. Volunteers can't be paid or even bought lunch. They say the old practices have disappeared. Okay, the voters, especially the older voters, um, want us, wanted us to give them gifts, money or like food because they were just used to that. But this time they just understand how the law changed so they don't require us any food or money. In a melodramatic campaign ad, the Conservative Grand National Party compares itself to a punished son. In the end, his mother forgives him because he's all she's got. The electorate is supposed to follow the lead and do the same at the election. But it's doubtful whether the voters are feeling so indulgent. At the centre of the election is the divisive figure of the president himself. To his supporters, he's a bold reformer but Conservatives see him as an incompetent and an opportunist. Stripped of his powers a month ago, No Mu Hyun can only sit silently and wait, both for the outcome of the election and for the final decision on his impeachment from the Constitutional Court. It was the culmination of a turbulent first year in office. The President's supporters and his critics fought it out on the floor of the National Assembly. The opposition won the day, forcing through impeachment on slender charges of illegal campaigning and corruption. The Conservatives acted before elections, expected to rob them of their dominance in the Assembly. A year before, it was so different. President No Mu Hyun took office, promising to clean up a venal establishment. An outsider from a humble background, he set out to transform an authoritarian political culture. How can you dare the common man the, try to impeach against the king? But he created that kind of culture. Everyone can impeach the president. So that's the new political culture and the new political revolution in Korea. 
It takes a train ride to the far south of Korea to find the president's roots and the source of his ambition. Aging farmers continue to work the land while their sons and daughters are drawn to the cities. This is as far as you can get from the seat of government and the scholarly elite that's always controlled money and power. No Mu Hyun grew up in this house, the son of poor farmers. The current owners entertain a constant stream of visitors who come looking for the secret of the president's success. The fact that such a common person could be elected shows how much our society has changed. It's a sign that people have become more mature over the years. The ambitious farm boy put himself through the bar exam, became a human rights lawyer and then a politician who championed the cause of the have-nots. Lee Jae-woo, an old classmate, says he was always a fighter. There are ancient religious sites on the hill behind. And if you look at the land, you'll see this house sits on the tail of a dragon. That's what gives the president his energy and spirit. When he's knocked down, he always comes back fighting. But not everyone is convinced of his merits. The pro-government candidate in the constituency has to work hard on waverers, those who always saw No Mu Hyun as a maverick and a troublemaker. Better off people didn't have much sympathy with him at the beginning, he says, but even they're beginning to come round now. The impeachment sparked a wave of sympathy across the country. Tens of thousands took to the streets of Seoul for candlelight vigils. But voter sentiment remains volatile. There are few issues in this election. It's all about image and emotion.